let's paint some watercolor daisies. We're going to keep it really simple with a number 20 flat brush. Let's get started. All right, as some of you, some of you know, we have adopted a rescue dog, and that rescue dog does not understand the sounds of the house yet. So you're going to hear probably some barking, which I'm not going to be able to edit out. But right now, we'll, we'll just see how it goes. All right, as usual, the first thing that I do is I'm using Naples Yellow water, water Down to establish where my whites are going to remain white. And my tagline is, remember to keep whites your paper white. So that's going to be my lightest lights. Now I'm finding from some value spots of that, some color spots of value, places that I know I want the value to be a certain color, meaning how dark or light I want something to be, and frankly, what color too. So this is just kind of creating a key at the very beginning for what I'm going to do. I'm making my color dabs up on the upper uh, left-hand side because I want to see how light or dark they are before I apply them to the paper. I'm not going to put in my darkest darks yet. I'm going to work up to that. So I've established my lightest lights. Now I'm basically working with mid-tones, and I'm aware of color. I want to keep saturation high if I can, but I'm also aware that there's quite a bit of graying going on. If you look at the daisy in the second glass, uh, it's quite gray in there. So I want to see how much color can I put in my grays. Now the reason that the, it's gray in there with the daisy is, is because the, the glass itself wraps around, and that glass, even though it's clear, when it wraps around, it creates a layer of gray. So I have to be very aware of color and also gray and how that relates to value. So like I said, these are my mid-tones, and I'm putting them in kind of as place markers. I want to be able to place values near each other that are the same. Then I can play with color somewhat. And that was my value finder. That was my red plexiglass value finder there, because I wanted to check and see, was I right? Were my grays the same value as my yellows? And I thought, yep, they're pretty darn close, and that's what I need. If everything's mid-toned, then I can change temperature, and that will establish the form, even though the value is going to be approximately the same. And there's not a big wide value range in this in the subject. Quite, well, there is. I mean, the whites that are or the white petals of the daisy are quite light, but the rest of the picture is mostly midtones. So if I want to produce forms, I got to figure out a way to make things warmer and cooler. Now, warmer meaning to add more yellow to something, or maybe some more orange or red, and in order to get cooler, then to add some um, blue or purple or maybe even a neutral like a burnt sienna. So I'm really dealing a lot with temperature here. How warm is something? How cool is something? If it's warmer, then I want to lean it toward yellows. If it's cooler, then I want to lean it uh, toward the other side of the um, color wheel. But I never go as dark as purple. And this is a, a grayish purple going, oh no, that's a green. Oh, that was interesting. The green that I found was, I really studied the uh, inside of the that the middle of that daisy and it's you, you everybody thinks the inside of the daisy is yellow but it's not it actually has a lot of green in it and it must be because the stem meets whatever you call that middle part that middle button part so i found that color by mixing a um, hansa yellow not with any kind of orange i really wanted to keep oranges and reds out of this and what i did instead was add green and um, just a basic green and a little bit of um tiny bit of quinacridone sienna in there. Very similar to painting gold, the color gold, but leaning it cooler, definitely leaning it toward green, which would be cooler. And now my paper started to pull up. Now I didn't say um, what I usually say, which is this is, um, um, what do you call it, arch paper, um, cold press. It's a 12 by 12 inch sheet of paper, and I'm trying desperately to hold it down with that green tape. Now I know the green tape is really distracting, but it, it Nothing works as well as the green tape, even though you wouldn't think so because it's determined not to stick today. But that is because um, it's winter in Vermont, where I am, which means it's very cold outside, which means we keep the heat running all the time and have wood heat, so everything dries out a lot. So paper curls, skin wrinkles, lips chap, that's just the way it is. All right, now the, the great thing about that big brush is it's not letting me get finicky. I have to squint my eyes and just look at big value shapes. Where do I see big value shapes, and can I plug color into them? So I'm thinking this way. I'm thinking value shape, 
All right, I can find it. What color is it? All right, I can mix it. Number three, what value is it? And does it match the values that are right next to it? And if it does, then I'm going to plug it in. So there's sort of a three-way criterion that has to meet in order for me to apply a color at this point. And that's why I'm starting to have quite a few test tabs. So let's see. Um, it was really important, too, in order for this, the colors in this to look more saturated than they are, um, I, I made sure to uh, make that, that shadow, the slight shadow that's on the table, make sure that that was gray. You know, if you have a subject that is mostly, um, you, you want a lot of color in it, if you surround it with grays, then those colors will pop. But I knew I didn't have that option. I had that option for the petals, but I didn't really have that option for anything else because, um, the, um, because the paper, you know, that yellow piece of paper and that blue piece of paper take up a lot of real estate. And I'm very, very, very aware of the value that's going on in those papers. The value in those papers is a lot the same value as what's happening inside the vases. Now that makes kind of a lot of sense because the papers are being seen through the, um, through the, what do you call it, glass. But they're grayed down a little bit. So I keep a pile of gray nearby, that same gray that I used for the shadow underneath the uh, glass or the, the jar. I'm keeping that nearby. Now here's the watercolor trick that everybody knows, you know. Um, it's okay to put in, if you want to smooth things out a little bit, turn your subject upside down, load your brush, and paint downwards. Mix your up, you mix enough so that you aren't scrubbing, and then turn it right back side, right side up. That's how most watercolor, <laughs> that's how most watercolor backgrounds and skies are done. They're usually done upside down. I think almost everybody knows that. So things are looking pretty good. Now the real temptation here is, is to paint too much. Remember I said my tagline is keep the whites of your paper white. And so I'm going to leave the whites white because the daisies are white. But then you can see, just looking at the value dabs up on the left, I didn't make a dab for every color that I used, but for most colors that I used, I did. And you can see they're all mixed. They all go together pretty well. And if you squint, they're almost all the same value. And I would say this painting is um, almost completely value let me think for a second. Let's see if uh, one is white or zero is, yeah, one is white. Mm, do we even get to value five? I don't, I don't think so. Not until I came here. Finally, I got to final steps and I thought, I'm just going to increase the value just a little bit in the darkest, darkest places that I see, which were some green, to my eye, some green things. But what mattered here was the value. I'm just going to punch it up just that tiny little bit. That always seems to happen in last for me in last adjustments. I seem to paint from my lightest lights. We start from, from the very beginning, um, starting with just that, um, leaving the whites of my paper white, and then moving toward darks. And the, the darks are the very last thing that I put in. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value, mix for color. Please join my YouTube channel. And uh, because so many people who watch these do not join my YouTube channel, and um, it's free. And they're great tutorials to watch. All right, see you next time. Bye-bye.